Good afternoon, guys. I am Dr. Manoj Nair, aquaculture scientist for the COM land grant program in Konape. I work out of the land grant central office here in Colonia town, and I'm in charge of the aquaculture program toward the Micronation region. Uh, for the time being in FSM, we are uh, having a multi site uh, research project on sea cucumbers, mainly the sandfish sea cucumber. These are a couple of sandfish we, we have been rearing. Uh, as you know, sea cucumbers are highly economical in their value, especially for the Asian markets. And that's the reason why we have uh, chosen uh, sea cucumber, sandfish sea cucumber, as one of our candidate species for aquaculture. The aim of the project is to provide economic development opportunities for the Micronesian people, train them, and through research and extension, we try to develop a technology where Micronesians can produce hundreds and thousands of uh, sea cucumber for making money uh, and selling to the oriental market in Asia. So in that regard, this project started in 2014. So the project started in 13, I came on board on 13, and 2013 the project started in 2014. So right where we are standing is the hatchery part of it in Ponape. Actually this project is also simultaneously running in Yap State and also in Palau. We were supposed to do Marshall Islands, but unfortunately Marshall Islands doesn't have this particular species, so we might be trying another species there. So at this moment in Ponape, uh, Net Point is a facility where we are doing the hatchery part of it because this program is based not on wild uh, collection and cutting or anything, anything like that. We are doing artificial breeding and uh, production of juveniles through biological methods where we bring in the male and the female and spawn them and uh, get the eggs fertilized and produce the juveniles and the juveniles are used for farming uh, research uh, project. Uh, we have uh, currently a site in Sokes Municipal in uh, Ponape, where we have a huge farm, 100 by 100 meters long, a hectare farm, where we release the uh, juveniles out of our research programs are released there for studying the growth of this species. So right now, like I said before, we are standing in the hatchery section but right now it's the grow out section we'll move inside and I'll show you the hatchery steps as actually these these guys have already given out 4 million eggs uh, two weeks almost uh, 11 days ago and they are uh, we are rearing them in the tanks inside and you can see the process and the stages of the larvae inside and we can move inside so this again is a sandfish sea cucumber called in scientific terms called holoturia scabra and in uh, Ponapain, it's called a langon. So let's go inside and start the first section of the tour, which is the hatchery part of the program. Thank you. Part of the project where we, where we are hatching the, the eggs, which we got from those uh, animals you saw in the last segment. And we collect these eggs in seeds like this. And the eggs are fertilized and put in these tanks. Uh, and we have a stocking density and we according to the number of e eggs we have and then uh, the size of the tank we put them in these tanks. And every other day we collect the eggs or the larvae once they are hatched in sieves like this. This is a sieve cloth of different mesh size because the larvae are of different sizes. So we drain out all the animals in these sieves and they, we collect from these into the tank. If you look in the side, you can see very, very small babies inside. So once we collect, we look them, look at, look at them under the microscope, and we count them, and then we put them back, or we put them in another tank. Why? Because this is a controlled environment. Uh, I did tell you the this, the whole place you see the water inside is salt water, and the salt water is coming from the ocean outside. We are around 100 meters from here, we have a long pipeline. The water is pumped by the pump on the other side and it's running through these green 
these contraptions, these are the filters. So the entire dirty water is being filtered to different sizes. You can see the filters out here. This is how a filter looks like. So the water goes through this and it's coming out at different sizes as the net goes. And finally there's a UV unit. So when its water is filtered, the animals, gross animals and the, such, the, the eggs and those things which pass through them are still alive. So these can also compete with your animals inside. So we want to kill everything in the water. So we use the UV light to kill all the water which is coming past the filter. So basically the water is totally sterile. There is nothing in the water which is growing. And that is the water we pump into these tanks and fill them and put the larvae inside. So like you might have a question now, okay, how is the animal going to feed? So you put all this animal inside and the water is clean, no food inside, right? So we have to produce food. So we have an algae section inside. Okay, when I talk about algae, algae are minute microscopic plants from the ocean. So the, these are the uh, plants which the sea cucumber larvae and the so, so we have to grow them in the algae room in a controlled environment and mass produce them and uh, according to the number of larvae we have like I said when we count we know how many larvae we have and how many animals we have accordingly we give them a cocktail of microalgae so I'll show you the microalgae room and we'll take the next step there if you look inside, it almost looks like a hospital. It's totally controlled. There is uh, air con. We keep the temperature to 21 to 23 degrees Celsius. And uh, like I said, these are plants. So what does a plant need? Plant needs substratum. Plant needs uh, food. Plant needs light to produce uh, carbohydrates through photosynthesis. So what we do in the same thing, what we do, we have cultures of microalgae, these are different kinds of microalgae, these are stock cultures, we, these are the cultures we produce mass in mass amounts. So this algae, like I said, this is sterile seawater, the seawater which we just pump, pump through the filters and UV, we use them in this. Also we sometimes even doubly sterilize by using the autoclave machine outside. So you autoclave this water, so water is totally sterile, then you add the to the water, you add chemicals just like the fertilizer and you add the inoculum just like the small shoot of plant, you put a little bit of the stock culture of the microalgae which is growing in the ocean. So these are pure culture, so it means one, only one type of microalgae is growing in this, in this bottle, not so many of them. So we have different species of microalgae growing in different bottles. So from this bottle, you go to the next stage, which is a, we don't have it here because we have already finished. You go to a three liter bigger bottle like this, and to a, a further bigger bottle like this, and from there, you go into a thing like a, because you want lots of food, because as the animals grow, they need more food. So we grow them in bottles like this. So if you see, there is a different change in the color. See, these are light, these are a little more yellow, and from there, are going into really dark. This is very densely filled with uh, microalgae. So here again, this this is air because we need to aerate them because we, there's no because it's again again like I said it's controlled. Just like you're aerating and uh, putting um, air for your fruit stock outside or your larvae, you need to air the aerate them. You see the lights because we mimic the condition of the ocean. 7 o'clock in the evening, we have a timer there which will turn off accordingly at 7 p.m. You'll turn, this one will turn off and all the lights will go off. To mimic, this is night time. And morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, this will, the timer will come on and all the lights will be on. So this is how we do it. Why we have kept it very low? Even though you will say the temperature in the ocean is around 29 to 30 degrees. Why this is 23? Because we don't want it to proliferate very fast. Because if it, because we are wasting a lot of energy and money, we don't want it to run very fast and the whole uh, system have to be run again. So we control the 
amount of algae we need and accordingly we, we uh, manipulate the temperature so that they don't grow very fast. So this is the algae section. Like you saw inside, they have been, they sieve the animals in the sieve and from there they put them in a, in a container. It could be a bottle or anything. Why? We need to know how many animals you have finally in the, in the tank. So the only way to do is to take the all the animals out, sit them on a sieve and put them in a bottle. From there, from there you take samples and you, in these little bottles, in uh, amounts we know, in like one or two ml, one or two ml per uh, pipette sample which you have seen before. And there, then we count all these animals in a chamber. So these are graduated, the chamber is graduated. You can see small graduations on the chamber, very, very minute. You can look at our microscope. And you put a ml of the sample water in it. Then you look under the microscope, take a little bit of formalin and kill those animals in the chamber and you count all of them. So then you know in one animal so many animals are there, you extrapolate. So in 20 liter or 100 liter tank so much, so much in one ton so much. So we get 20,000, 100,000, 1 million, whatever it is. According to that count, you calculate today you need X number of cells of microalgae to feed egg one larvae. So we have so many larvae, we need so many liters of microalgae because we also count the microalgae in, inside. It's a, this is called a hemocytometer. Actually hemocytometer is usually used for counting blood. The same thing we use to count algae. Same principle, it has graduations and you put one ml in it and count how many cells are there in the cells of microalgae are there in there. And accordingly you know, okay, one ml so much. So this uh, culture of or that bottle contains so many, so many millions of cells in one milliliter. Okay, so so much liter or ml, whatever, according to the day of uh, growth and the number of animals and the concentration of algae, we calculate the food and give every day morning and one third of the food we give every day evening. So we feed them like eight or nine o'clock in the morning, then we feed them like evening four o'clock. So that is the process here, I area. So the swimming larvae is going everywhere and finding out a suitable place for them to go down. So by day 10 to day 15, Within two weeks, they change the morphology from a flat swimming thing to slowly like a rounded sea cucumber. So if you see this picture here, this is like a ball now from this flat swimming sea cucumber. So once this is there, we go to, they are ready for, we call it settling. Settling means they are swimming, these are not swimming and this is not a fish. This is an animal which you see down in the ocean down on the floor. So they are ready to move, transform themselves from a swimming animal to going down. So at that time we, we call it settling. So during settling we, the, we, pro, we put some plates which I'll show you outside and these swimming round animal they go on the plates and they sit on the plates and plates are also painted with food. And that food they graze on that food because now they become like a sea cucumber. They want to, they have the tentacle and they are moving around and eating on them and they start growing them. And once we can start visually seeing them at around 0.1 to 2 gram, we take them out and goes to the next nursery, actual nursery phase. There are two nursery phases, one inside the hatchery, hatchery building and the second nursery phase is in the ocean. So for us the second nursery phase happens at Nico Marine Park where we have floating structures with nets. And the animals, they grow to around 20 gram size. Then it goes to the grow out, the final grow out to the farm where they, we put them in the sand. Because the, the basic morphology at the end of the day, they eat sand and the organic matter in the sand. That's how the seeking number lives. So it has to be in the ocean, in an area where there is sand. So by around 20 grams, because if you put earlier, the problem also is there are a lot of predators which eat the little baby sea cucumber. So we have found out through trial in around 20 grams is kind of good enough size 
wait for them to survive in the ocean. So, so that's the size when we, from the nursery, second nursery, when we find animals in the floating structures or floating harpa cages of that size, we take those animals, weigh them again, make measurements and take our data and release them in the, our farm. Where they grow around one and a half years to be a big adult sea cucumber, the market size of which for this particular species is around 400 grams. So the aim of this is now still a pilot project research phase. The aim is as we go along in the next six, eight months to one year, mass production. Can we do mass? Because a businessman wants 10 ton. He doesn't want five sea cucumber. So the aim from the pilot stage to mass produce. Now we are uh, trying to iron out all the problems we have in the hatchery and in the growth, social as well as biological. Once we start figuring out each problems and making it much better, the efficiency of the production, even in the world, the, you'll see there are, we have, uh, like I mentioned, we got four million eggs. That doesn't mean four million eggs, four million sea cucumbers will come out. The survival to juvenile is only one to 10%. That itself is very good, all over the world. So our aim is to improve that. So we get more, because if you look, this all is energy sucking. Yeah? You have aircon, you have pump, you have filter, all, all these take energy. Because uh, water has to be pushed in and so, so many things. So as much as you can produce in one cycle, you're more efficient. Just producing 20 animal or 50,000 animal, it takes the same effort. Because all these lights have to be on, all this pump has to be pumped. Pump cannot be pumped for half a tank or a full tank. It will run on so on. So that is uh, something we are trying to improve as, as we go on. And the second uh, phase of the thing is to get as much as micronation uh, people trained in this, uh, in this program. So we are uh, happy Brian, we have a good relationship with CUMFSM, where we have, Brian, we have a um, close relationship with Brian Lynch, especially marine science. So during summer, we get uh, interns from the marine science program who come and work with us for a couple of uh, couple of months. And some of them who are interested, we always tell them if you're interested for a short term uh, internship with us, we paid and uh, we hired them. Like this boy here and we have another uh, boy in Yap, Owen. He's also a marine science graduate, but he's, uh, in cha in, he's doing some work there. We have Elijah, who is also working there, also a marine science graduate. So our aim is to hire and train as much as possible micronations. That's the aim of the project. So micronations also know all to do all these things. It's not very hard. They also are hands-on in this. And also do a business uh, venture. We have opportunity to do business uh, in aquaculture field. Like you so see around 90% of what you see around is water. So you have to uh, efficiently, sustainably use water to improve your resources which are getting depleted through illegal fishing or or through natural uh, disasters. So that is the aim of the project. We are partners with the, uh, usually with the local fisheries departments. Here in Pompey State, we partner with the Office of Fisheries and Aquaculture or OFA. In Yap State, we have with the Yap Fisheries, uh, Yap State Marine uh, Fisheries. In Palau also we have, uh, we work with the Palau Fisheries uh, departments. So that's basically what we do here. So right now I'll show you the, the second part of it, how the, what I was talking about the plates and the, the nursery, and then we'll go to the And now once we know, once we count the larvae which are inside today's larvae, are 50% ready to settle. We'll bring, count them and we'll pour the larvae in these tanks. So, and they'll slowly start going and attaching on these kinds of plates. And then we, again, we feed them microalgae and as maybe a couple of weeks later, once we see them visually, we change the food. Here too, starting it's the really clear, uh, sterile filtered water. And as slowly as we see them attach and become bigger, we change the, to the raw ocean water. Because ocean water already has food inside. And we put some additional food also inside. 
and here they grow for at least one and a half to two or even sometimes even three months at that time by two to two and a half months once we see animals big animals which uh, what our criteria is here we have a hapa net outside if it cannot go through the hapa net we collect because we don't want to put them too much inside and feed and waste a lot of our resources once it goes in the ocean they grow faster so as we see animals of uh, which are we call shooters we collect them so the other animals can also start growing faster because we are putting uh, putting food inside so that's what we do here so two to three months here and then it goes to a nursery section two so around one to two gram size animals the ones jackson was holding in his hand that is the size that is uh, almost that is a much bigger but even smaller than we in nico which is a floating uh, floating structure i can if you have time you can come there or i can give you some pictures you can put those pictures and those there they grow for six to eight months and once they are finger my finger size around 20 gram size they are ready to go to the, our real farm the, which we call the grow outs so uh, the whole thing has a hatchery phase nursery one nursery two and the grow out so what we have found through our previous experiments is it takes around two just before two years to reach market size 400 gram animals from the egg the day of spawning it takes within two years to reach market size so wow. that's what we have found. This is a monotonous job. You should have a passion for it. It's not easy because everything is labor intensive because you have to drain the time. You cannot just drain it very fast because the animals, the larvae are very fragile. So it takes a lot of time, energy. We, we have a common funny saying, is, saying here that every day is Monday. <laughs> so we work 365 days for this project. So we are working for us and they are well trained and we hopefully we are, like I said inside, our aim is to train more and more people and get uh, people more aware of this uh, way of uh, sustainably doing through hatchery propagation, produce more sea cucumbers for economic development or for farming than trying to just uh, collect all your sea cucumbers from the wild. So we also sometimes release animals in the MPAs. Our excess animals we also release in MPAs. So there is also a production of animals for the wild also for people to uh, see that there is conservation efforts also going from the land grant program. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me or call me at the office. I'll be more than glad to help you out. Thank you.